Hello and welcome to the Real Women Real Purpose talk show live in the On Purpose Woman Global Community Facebook group. I'm Jenny Robertson, the host of the Real Women Real Purpose talk show, where I talk with real women who are living their lives on purpose and bringing their unique gifts to the planet. I'm also the host, I'm sorry, I'm also the founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman magazine and the founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community. And today I'm talking with spiritual teacher, transformational coach, psychotherapist and art therapist, Liz Gall Lerner, about presence, your guide to better relationships through clear communication. Welcome, Liz. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, it's my pleasure as always. Yeah, we always have a good time when we do these chats. <laughs> so before we dive into this, well, I think it's an extremely important topic. I want to tell our viewers a bit about you. Liz is the founder of Enlightened Communication Institute, the creator of Divorce Well and Thrive coaching program, and the Enlightened Communication for Luminous Living course. I love that term, luminous living. She brings decades of experience to your journey. A spiritual teacher, transformational coach, psychotherapist, and art therapist, she guides you to success in even the most high stake situations and conversations to live your vision. And you can find out more about Liz at yourinspiredchoices.com. And we'll give you some other things to be checking out with Liz a little bit later, but all the links are in the text of this video. So Liz, wow. Well, you know, you wrote a really cool article in the current issue of On Purpose One magazine about self-communication, because that's really what we're going to be concentrating on today, our relationship with self and how we talk to ourselves and with ourselves, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. So this article was called Self-Communication, Friend or Foe. Right. <laughs> and I think your article, especially the story that you tell about your own experience, mm -hmm. really illustrates what we're going to be talking about today. So would you share that with our viewers? Sure, sure. And, you know, people uh, use the word self-talk a lot. And um, so that might be a more familiar term mm -hmm. because we walk through the days um, sometimes in constant conversation or having a constant talking in our heads. Yeah. And we don't often recognize that as conversation. And so I just want um, to highlight that, that that actually is a conversation potentially, especially if we answer it <laughs> in our heads. Mm -hmm. So um, the story that was kind of the pivot point in the article I wrote was about a friend of mine and I walking, doing a kind of a regular weekly walk on uh, a beach in Chicago and the lakefront. And I was complaining a lot. I was <laughs> very, very unhappy with uh, my job or you know my social life or I had just moved there not that long ago what was going on and this person knew me professionally so we were work friends and he was a psychologist and I was an art therapist at the time and he just said you know this doesn't sound like you like who who, who was saying this stuff who is talking in your head? And I uh, really never thought about it like that, right? So it was all of a sudden, I was like, well, what do you mean? It's me. I've been saying this stuff for years, you know? <laughs> I've been listening <laughs> for a long time. And um, I started to realize if I really explored it, that some of the things that I was saying were not, were things I had been taught or things that I had heard or things that were said to me or stuff like that. And that really might not be me, but I incorporated it a long time ago and just mm -hmm. believed it was me. Mm -hmm. What kind of things were you saying? So, um, well, for let's just take a, like a really simple example. So um, when I was a kid, my fifth grade teacher told me that um, I couldn't do math. <laughs> and for most of my life, I couldn't do math. <laughs> like I believed it. Like I, you know, because she couldn't teach me or didn't have maybe a different way of teaching me 
all of a sudden I wasn't good with numbers and I couldn't do math. And that was just my rhetoric. That was if somebody said, hey, you know, figure out the tip or <laughs> you know, do whatever, I'd be, oh no, I, you know, I'd actually have a like a, a physical resistance to mm -hmm. the even the idea. And then when I really started to examine that, it was like, well, when I walked into that classroom, the jury was out on whether or not I could do math. And once I, and, and, and she was my math tutor, which made it really bad. She apparently but, wasn't very good at her job, I have had to say. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so, but what, why I'm bringing that one up is because it's such an obvious, um, you know, acceptance, unconscious acceptance of what somebody else said or judged or um, made you or me feel mm -hmm. that stayed for decades. Yeah. Right. Until I thought, well, who was she to tell me? especially now that we're talking about learning styles and, but who was she to tell me that I couldn't do math instead of helping me find a way to do math, right? Mm -hmm. So that would have changed my whole internal story. So walking on the beach that day was so important because I started to question who exactly the phrases belong to right? Did they really belong to me or did they belong to somebody else? Mm -hmm. So another thought might be, um, I'm not good enough or uh, I won't be able to something, right? Mm -hmm. Or, oh, you know, I've had what, what might have been something from your youth or that you think, you know, kind of stayed with you. Like, you know, oh, um, I'm not a, a lot of people with body stuff, right? Like, oh, I'm not this enough or that enough, right? Uh, thin enough or, or or meaty enough, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, well, I had red hair as, oh. well, um, as a kid and until I got this hair. And boy, that was a stigma right there. I didn't hear that in my family, but I certainly got teased for it. Oh. I got called names for it. I was the only, I think there were three redheads in my entire high school and my mother kept saying, one of these days, you're going to love your hair. And I'm like, I will never love my hair. I hate my hair. Went to college. My first week, I dyed my hair blonde oh. <laughs> and just, and didn't care. And it was like, but I, I finally, she was right. You know, when I grew into myself and I realized how different it was, but there was that thing that said, redheads are ugly. They're mm -hmm. not attractive. They're blonde. So that beautiful. translates into, I am ugly. Exactly. Right. Blondes are then... prettier, you know. Right. And yeah. so if we if we took that and kind of unpacked it just the way you did just now, mm -hmm. it would be, oh, those kids told me I was ugly. Yeah. At the time, I believed them. What do I think about it now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when we step back and go, does this really belong to me? Do, you know, do, do I agree with it? That's a great question. Yeah. Right. Do I agree? <clears throat> if I don't agree, well, good. I get to make a choice about whether that should be part of my life or part of what I carry around. Because if I don't agree with it and I think it's mine, well, I don't have to keep it. Discard, throw it away. Yeah. Right. What do you replace? Is with? that right? <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you really think? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, maybe somebody says, well, you know, I really think I'm beautiful or, well, I really think I'm just fine. I remember the first time a man said to me, you're striking. And I went striking. That's better than beautiful. I think, you know? <laughs> yeah. No kidding. And so, but it was that whole, yeah. And we and get the replacement. Place, like you say, and we, it's the truth for us. It's the absolute yeah. truth. Yeah. And so the fact is we actually really need to listen to what we're saying to ourselves, mm -hmm. because that changes everything. It changes our day. It changes our moment. It changes if we can do a math problem. It changes if we can do a good interview. It changes if we give a speech. It changes how we raise our children, right? Because if, if somebody's walking around, you know, feeling or thinking something negative, well, that's going to tank your day. 
Yeah. Right. And if you answer it, right, if there actually is a conversation, like I want people to really start listening to if they're having a conversation. Right. Oh, there are voices in my head, not just a voice in my head. There yeah, are like if they're yeah. saying and, and not in the, you know, the mentally ill kind of exactly. way, pieces, but the but the like. Um, you know, oh, I don't look good in that. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe I do. Well, maybe I don't. Well, what should maybe I should change? No, maybe not. You know, like all of this stuff. And it's like, OK, wait, mm-hmm. how does that initial st- comment make you feel in your body right yeah and if it's really true that you don't like what you're wearing or how you look in what you're wearing change (laughs) but you'll you'll make a decision when we're in our head like that do we no we're just always in that sort of and it's that uncomfortable doubting place or yeah there are there is self-talk that is cheerleading right right and we we also want to either decide that we agree with that or make it our own or but we don't necessarily want to get rid of that unless it's every minute yeah that might be a little fake then too something else we well, learned, right it, well it's it's it, to me not so much fake as really needing some support mm, okay Right. Like, and, and if that's happening, then how do you, how do you figure out that what kind of support you want or need, mm. I think is, would yeah, be the sense. answer to that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a thought while you were speaking about where in our body, are we feeling that question or that debate that we're having or that initial thought? Mm-hmm. And the, the thought that I had, and, and this kind of a new thought about this is that, you know, we talk so often about just changing your mindset. And that's all up here. But if we actually get down into the body, because the body knows the truth, right? And so I love that. You, that's another spin on this whole thing that, you know, we can just, I've never bought into this. I think just change your mind and everything works. You know, you can fake changing your mind. Well, yeah, <laughs> you, I mean, you can do it for a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah. But like I, I say to all the people that work with me or come to any of my programs, change does not happen from the neck up. Mm, that's a good one it doesn't right I mean we if if it did we could think anything and our lives would be perfect I know it would be so boring wouldn't we (laughs) we'd all be big boring quicker (laughs) but Um, um but yeah so and you know in my title in our title for this you know time together um we use the word presence. Yeah. And that's where really integrated presence comes in. Is that connecting the mind and the body, starting to be aware of what you're actually feeling in your body. So if somebody says something negative to you, outside of you, um, you might tense up right? Or any, I would. (laughs) So where, where would that happen? For me, it might be, you know, in the solar plexus or in the stomach, or it might be, I notice my, you know, hands getting tight or, you know, my position changing. So think about if we're saying negative things to ourself or even whatever we're saying to ourselves, does it help us breathe more openly or does it shut it down? Do we start to get tense or do we slouch or are we standing up? Like just starting to notice what's actually happening in our body means that um, we are actually present in this moment, right? When we're thinking those thoughts or we're thinking about what so-and-so is going to say at the whatever, the meeting or lunch or we are not here, we are there. Our body is going to go where our brain goes. Mm, that's another good one. You always have such great. Uh, well, but think about it, right? Yeah. Like if you're thinking about something that's going to happen at five o'clock and you're worried about it, you're living five o'clock and worry, even though it hasn't even happened. So true. Yeah. And the body is living it too. 
So the more we're in touch with what's actually happening, the less stressed we're going to be. <laughs> because we can go, oh, that hasn't happened yet. Why am I thinking about that? What's happening right mm-hmm. now? Take a mm-hmm. breath. Get here. Feel your feet. <laughs> Feel your body. Where are, are we here? <laughs> it's our vehicle. It's all we've got, right? To walk around in. Mm-hmm. And that's how we can be more present mm-hmm. with ourselves is by just being aware and noticing and then shifting something. Just... Yeah, step one for sure. Uh-huh. What right? else can we do? Well, I think I think that's a lot right there, actually, because we're talking about probably three things already. We're talking about noticing if we're having self-talk and what it is. Mm-hmm. So that's a big one because it just goes on. Right. And then we're talking about noticing whether that self talk, we're trying to be curious about whether that self talk is actually us, which also then brings us in further to us, like what's actually happening in here. Then three, we're, we're looking at um, being actually physically present to what we're thinking and noticing what that's, what meaning that has physically, right? Mm -hmm. So by doing all those three things, all of a sudden we're far more present in this moment than we are if we're just being, having anxious thinking or saying things to ourselves. Now that's different than strategic thinking, Mm -hmm. right? Like a lot of times the self-talk can create either sadness or potentially sadness or worry, or if, if we're not cheerleading, um, and going, good job. I like the way I did that. Um, so I forgot where I was going with that. I said being strategic thinking. Oh yeah. Thank you. Strategic thinking is taking a worry or even a self-talk that is difficult and taking an action or thinking about the action that you can take, but not in a story form, like, oh, if I took that action, then this would happen. Or if I took that action, then that would happen. Because then you're you're back in that that sort of whirlpool, Mm -hmm. right? But if it's, oh, I'm gonna replace that thought with something neutral or positive then that's taking, it's thinking of what what can I do to reduce my stress or this negativity? And then actually doing it takes everything down like to to reality, Mm -hmm. (laughs) kind of. Yeah. And actually that we're really okay in the moment that we're in, which is a big thing for me, this okay in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, Moment by moment, yeah. Yeah. I love what you said about being curious about it rather because I'm thinking about, you know, when I started doing some of this work many, many years ago, I would, I knew that my thinking was, you know, not really mine. I knew where some of it came from. And when I would think that instead of just like learning, you know, having something else to do with it, I would get mad at myself for thinking it again, because you know I'm supposed to be over that, right? (laughs) So it's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just another way to beat ourselves up again. (laughs) I mean, it's it's really kind of silly when you think about it because it's we're trying to heal this. And in the process of healing this, we're criticizing ourselves because we're not healing correctly or something, you know. Right. And And that's that's exactly what you're saying. I mean, what you're saying is exactly right, because the 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 idea is not to punish ourselves for doing it. Mm -hmm. oh bad you you know you're having a negative thought it's really to understand where it's coming like coming from so for example I remember when on that beach um there was some I cannot remember it was so many decades ago really but I can't remember the phrase but I realized that that phrase was definitely not me it was definitely coming from my mother and once I recognized that, I could actually hear her say it, right? I could, I could connect the dots um, 
And then it was like, oh, wait a minute. Do I want that in my system? Is that something that's going to support me? Is it helpful? Do I like it? Do I not like it? You know, if is there anything true about it that I do want to look at? But mostly it was, wait a minute, that is actually, I think it's me because I've been saying it forever inside here, but it actually isn't me. It didn't come from me. Mm -hmm. And there are things that do come from us and you know it when you hear it, <laughs> you know, yes. it's like, does this feel like it's me? And it might not be positive and it might not be negative or whatever, but it's like, oh yeah. Okay. Like, but most of those things do have origin points. Right. Like if we went back and back and back and back and we just have like our first experience of seeing an ocean or our first experience of, you know, getting a hug or our first experience of any, you know, any first experience, there's no, there's nothing written about that. Right. Like it, it we're totally a clean slate and then things happen. <laughs> People write all over our slate, don't they? They do. They do. And sometimes we write all over our slate. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right? But, you know, there's, okay, where did this come from? Why is, why is that important? How has that guided me? Is there any wisdom in it I want to keep? Mm -hmm. Right? But, you know, is there a part of it that really I don't need or want and need to make a decision about myself? Right. Like if I'm not listening to that, what am I listening to mm -hmm. in me? Yeah. Right. And then neutral or positive. And it's a really gentle way to be with yourself in this process. Yeah. Because you're loving all of it. Yeah. You're just knowing that it all isn't yours. Yeah. 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 That's really lovely. And you like, might like not that. love all of it because some of the stuff that isn't ours isn't lovingly. Well, yeah. But I mean, in, I, I guess you're not, not loving all of it, but loving yourself in the process of yeah. it. Yeah. Completely. I guess is what I mean. it's, yeah. It's not like we did something as individuals wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no right or wrong here. It's it's about what am I experiencing and why? And I think the most important piece is the fact that we have choice. Yeah. You know, we talked you you had mentioned, you know, the idea of change and how. And we both kind of agree that change can be hard, but I also think that a lot of times people don't recognize or understand or feel to be true that there actually are choices that we have, like how you feel about something. Like a lot of times people don't believe that there's a choice. You just feel what you feel and that's who you are. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I don't agree with that. I believe and share with my people that even though we phrase things like I am angry, I am hungry, I am happy, I am sad. That's not true. Mm -hmm. We have the feeling. I have the feeling of being angry. I have the feeling of being sad. The only thing here is, that's constant is, is us. So I'm, I happen to be holding some paper just because I thought I might want to take a note. But a lot of times the example that I give is this is constant. That's us, right? Mm -hmm. And if we put an emotion there, that emotion's transient. It goes away, okay. yeah. right? Another one could show up. And then maybe we have two and then we, one goes away, the other goes away, but we're here and we get to choose really. I think that takes some curiosity and work and, and time with it. But I think choice is one of the key elements to all of this that helps at least help me. And I think has helped many people actually take some control over their lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, control I agree so much. Yeah. Over what they, what, you know, how they're yeah. reacting and what they feel and why. Um, so, you know, I think those, those points of like presence, curiosity, choice, 
know, when you, that's why my original company is called Your Inspired Choices, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a big word for me. Yeah. And I've got a question for you. Uh, do you find that, well, let me just say, this is what I found for myself. And yeah. is, is that if I label myself, you know, I am angry, then I can sometimes take that on and say, I'm just an angry person. Right. And that becomes a label and that becomes, that gets in our head and we self-perpetuate the whole notion and it becomes a defining aspect of our entire personality, right? That's exactly and It gives right. us excuses too, doesn't it? Some, it gives us excuses to continue to be that way sometimes. Well, I can't yeah, help it. Because, because it means, because because it's like identity formation. It's like, yeah. I have identified myself as an angry person or a fearful person or an unhappy person or whatever. Yeah or happy person. And it's very limiting and it isn't true. That's why I kind of was talking about the original, like when we're born and we have all those first experiences, we're not uh, any of those things, mm -hmm. <laughs> really. You know, even if somebody says you were a colicky baby, it doesn't mean you were sad, <laughs> right? Yeah. It means you had something going on in your body, right? It's, it's that, I think that is so that, that I couldn't have said it better, Jenny, that, you know, that, that I am is extremely powerful as many of your listeners know, and on so many levels, but to identify oneself like that could, is exactly what you, you said. It makes it very hard to disidentify, mm -hmm. right? To um, to not walk around with the kind of the overcoat of, oh, this is the kind of person I am. And so what I, in my, um, <laughs> I have this expression, getting to the you without the goo. I think, I, did I ever tell you that? Yeah, I think you did. I love um, it. And it's really about understanding, and I, I teach people how to do it, but understanding how to take that overcoat off so that, you know, there's a, now that might sound frightening, actually, you know, overcoats protect mm. um, from the weather, but, you know, the idea that, that actually maybe without it, we're stronger. Um, and, you know, that's a, a process. It's not like, okay, boom. Yeah. Overcoats are also very heavy. <laughs> they are very heavy and yeah. that's it. It's like, okay, I, I get to choose if I want to carry this around with me or I want to leave it where in its time and place where it belongs. Wow, you've said so many wonderful nuggets here. Yeah. And before we wrap up, I, I had another thought because you touched on something about, you know, we could have labeled ourselves as a happy person. And if mm -hmm. we label ourselves as a happy person, might we also like have all that self-talk if we're not happy? Like we don't allow ourselves to be sad. Is that, a, I mean, does that happen? I mean, I've never thought of that before, but I could see if we see ourselves or if other people are always telling us, well, oh, you're always in such a good mood, Jenny. Not that anybody's right. ever said that to me, but you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't mean that in a negative way, but it's just not a conversation I've had, but it could mean I, that I have to live up to something now. And so yeah. I'm not allowed to be angry. Yeah. I'm not allowed to be upset or sad or anything like that. So I think that's, that's a really, really good point. point. Yeah. A really good point, because think about the number of people that, I don't know, maybe you've talked to or I've talked to who um, don't don't share yeah. when they're sad or don't feel like they are allowed to, you know, get support. That's for other people. They're supposed to be supporting other people mm -hmm. because they're in such good shape all the time. Right. But that's, you know, nobody, nobody is free from... Um, having the need for support sometimes or having a sadness in their lives or joy. I mean, that's, that's kind of what it's all about, right? That we have all those feelings just maybe in some kind of balance. <laughs> that's a, that's a great um, thing to aspire to. And I think it's, that's why it's so important to have conversations like this. Yeah, they, we're real people who are talking about real things that we've experienced. And some yeah. people might look at you, Liz, and go, well, you know, she's a psychotherapist and she's a this and she's a this. She must have it all together, <laughs> you know, and it's like, well, on a lot of days you do, right? A lot of days I do. And then there's those days when I need help. I need support. Right. I need a shoulder. 
a exactly. year, you know. Exactly. And it's the journey, right? Like, yeah. you know, sometimes it's about decades that you've lived. Sometimes it's about how many times you had to go around that mountain and experience the same thing over and over again until you did it differently. You know, sometimes it's about figuring out that who was talking in your head is not you, you know. Um, but yeah, like nobody, we're all whatever, we're, we're, we're all, what are we? We're all human animals. <laughs> yeah, we're all messy. We're just all we're messy, messy in and a really kind of cool beings. way, you know? Too, right? What was that? We're, we're messy and we're human and we're all spiritual Certainly. beings too. And so yeah. there's all of this integration and energy that takes place or can. Mm. But um, deciding whether that voice in your head is yours or not can be a game changer, can't it? So I'm, I oh, it was really, definitely one for me. Yeah. And yeah. I would love before we wrap this up for you to just real quickly go through those three steps again, because they are so important and they sound really simple. Yeah. And I, I want to um, also take talk a, while, about a, a little gift for people. Yes, who yes. I was going to ask you about that as well. So, okay. One is starting to pay attention to what conversation might be going on in your head. Two, well, I might be have a two and a half. Um, you know, seeing if you're if if it's actually a conversation or or it's a you know, just it's the same sentence over and over again, or if there's a response, right? Um, three is seeing how, two, well, two and a half, three, is seeing how um, your body feels or it where you might feel something in your body in relation to what's being said. So does it and, and there are people who don't actually identify feelings in their body. Um, you know, we all experience things in different ways. So one tip I would give for that would be notice your posture. Mm, okay. Does if something is, if you're saying something that doesn't sound positive and it's affecting something, you might turn in, you might slouch, you might close in. Um, it's not necessarily going to be like, oh, here I am feeling, right? Um, but noticing if some part gets tense or you get a headache or, you know, whatever uh, it might be for you. And the, well, before that was really the curiosity, right? Before the body was the curiosity. It was noticing, being curious, and then how is it connected to your body? Because the body is giving us information, right? If we, if we don't, and, and so like, for example, if your curiosity doesn't bring you back to like, didn't, if my curiosity hadn't brought me back to my fifth grade math teacher, whose name I will never forget, <laughs> um, if I didn't get anything from that, but my body changed or I started to feel tight in my torso or slump or anything. That's information. Mm -hmm. So that even if we don't know exactly where that message came from, it doesn't mean we can't replace it. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean we okay. can't choose to go, oh, wait a minute, how could I make that at least more neutral, if not positive? Um, and I think those three things um, are a really nice way to start paying attention. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And to help our viewers along the way, you <laughs> have a gift for them. Tell us about your gift. I do. So for those of you who might not watch the whole thing, and if you didn't, then you won't hear this little little you know, intro, um, we're attaching a video that's called tips on communication from me. And, um, it goes through actually a lot of the points that we've talked about, but it's there to listen to in a very quick form. Um, I think the video is five minutes, six minutes. Um, and, at the end, there's a slide that has um, some number tips that make it pretty clear nice. um, about what you can do. Yeah. 
um, to get you started on the, what is my self-talk really about, friend or foe? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to make sure that link is at the very top of our text so that people right. see that. Yeah. Or they even watch the video and so that they go get something from this because it's really right. an amazing gift. And you've given us some just wonderful, wonderful points here today, Liz. Oh, thank you. I'm Jane. always just My really, um, just really, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Enthralled oh, by your wisdom. Nice. Yeah. It's, uh, you just have a way of presenting things that are new to me very mm. often. That I, I heard, think is I've hard heard to a do. lot over the years, right? <laughs> What was that? That's hard to do. <laughs> it is hard to do. It's very hard to do. So thank you for that. And before we do wrap up, do you have a final thought you want to leave our viewers with? You know, I think there are two. One is, I think it's game changing. I know it was really eye opening for me. And you've said it a few times in this time together and I have said it as well. But I think what is so important is to have suddenly the awareness that those voices may not be yours. Because that in itself, people are like, well, so shocked at that. And I think if we can try that on, it's really game changing. And then the second part of that is really when you try it on, realizing that you have just stepped back from those thoughts. They are no longer just you, right? They're you listening to your thoughts. A thought isn't you, it's a thought. So then, get into the place of choice mm. is much simpler because already you've stepped back Hang on, oh I'm looking at that over there what do I think I'm going to choose one from column a one from column <laughs> b get rid of that column c and obviously I made it sound simplistic but just just being able to get your head around the fact that not everything you think has come from you, I think is game changing. Yeah, just being in that, staying in that question is really great. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Liz. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing your wisdom with us. And I do want to mention you're going to be back on mm -hmm. October 23rd. We're going to do another interview and you'll be talking about communication again, mm -hmm. but in relationships, including difficult relationships or divorce and you have a yes. book coming out next I month do. is it I do I'm excited um yes uh, this fall soon um the book is called divorce well and thrive your guide to being your best self under the worst circumstances oh, such a great title yeah. so excited about that and so um grateful that you've given me this opportunity to be of service thank you thank you for sharing all that you know with so many people here today. Thank you. And I want to thank anyone who's watching this, either the Facebook Live in the On Purpose Woman Global Community Facebook group or on our YouTube channel. You can always see what's coming up on the Real Women Real Purpose talk show by going to On Purpose Woman magazine, which is also in the text of this video, because that's where you also want to go and read Liz's wonderful article, which goes into a little more detail. You could hear the whole story that she was talking <laughs> about here, all the little nuances and all the things that she was really saying to herself during that time <clears throat> excuse me so that's opwgc.com slash magazine but again the, it is in the text of this you can also um, go there and look at all of our articles our advertisers our meetings that are coming up for the on purpose woman global community coming up on september 18th i'll be talking with tony giddles author of the new book 21 mistakes caregivers make and how to avoid them that's a book that just came out in fact, Tony just did a video of her opening up her box of books. And so that's real new. And that'll be here next Monday. So thank you again for watching the Real Women, Real Purpose talk show.